When times are tough, people go looking for hope. And the good news of the Christian faith is that we have hope. Our hope is Jesus. Jesus is the best thing to put your hope in because Jesus is better. Come and see. With me today is Kathy Strite and Heather Underwood. Um, thanks for coming, guys. Mm -hmm. um, and Heather's going to open us in a prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. We thank you so much for this time that we can open your word and that we can learn from you. You are our guide and our instructor, and we pray that you would open our hearts to what you have us um, to learn today, Lord, that you would lead us into a deeper understanding of what it means um, to have one Lord Jesus, that he is our Savior, he is the one who came to bring us all things that we can have in you, and that we become heirs with him, um, and we become his brothers and sisters. God, thank you for this time and be with us in this study. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Heather. Welcome to lesson two of chapter two of our study in Hebrews, uh, Jesus is Better. Um, I'm so thankful that we are doing this lesson now uh, for this study. Um, it's a solid reminder of who is in charge. And it reminds us that we are not in charge, that humans are not in charge that Jesus has this, He's in charge. Um, and as John said in uh, chapter one, as lesson one when he was reviewing it, the, 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 the book is, the epistles written to a, a, a struggling Christian Hebrew population. Um, they're, they're under persecution. Um, the, the whole culture surrounding them uh, is essentially against them. Um, so they're under a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. So uh, in chapter two, just kind of starting out, um, just wanted to read the last verse of chapter one and the intro verse of chapter, chapter two to kind of start us out. So uh, verse 14 of chapter one, are they not all, talk, speaking of angels, are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. Verse 1 in chapter 2. For this reason, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. So the, 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 one of the main themes in chapter 2 is pay attention. Take heed. This is very important. How can we ignore a message from somebody so unique and so special? You know, that our biggest danger is drifting away from Jesus and not, uh, and, um, and not participating in such a great salvation for us. Um, in, in the second verse of chapter 2, which starts, For if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? The writers... Uh, argument is as follows. Angels delivered the Ten Commandments. We see that in Acts 7 uh, verse 53 where Stephen uh, referenced this in his speech before they stoned him. Um, you know that, that the message from the angels proved reliable. It exposed sin and disobedience um, and, and that the, and the people received just retribution uh, for those sins. You know given that we now have the gospel de declaration from the Son of God. How much, how much more important is that um, than even the giving of the law to the Hebrews? Um, how can we neglect the salvation He's purchased for us with His blood? Uh, remember, this is God in the flesh, the God-man Jesus. Um, and this is not just idle speculation. The, um, some, the additional verses go through and demon, you know, that they heard it, they, the apostles, the, and the, the writer of this epistle says they heard it for themselves from the very lips of Jesus. And it was demonstrated by the Father with signs and wonders and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, so the, you know, we, we cannot turn our back on this. Kathy, do you have some more insight you want to share? pay attention, which is what you were just saying, pay attention to the great salvation that they have in Jesus. Um, and so, 
it's something that that really struck me because of the fact that with us being in this pandemic at this time um, so many of us have not been able to uh, worship and so many of us have actually taken advantage of the fact that we're not able to worship and as I said in our group the other night I think and we see a lot of the bench warmers that are that should realize because they are Christians they should realize that if they aren't paying attention to God even now um, that they're going to drift away and they're also going to have all the issues that the Hebrews are facing right now. Um, as, we, as we get into um, deeper into the chapter 2, uh, verse 5, um, verse 5 says, For he did, not subject, um, he did not subject to angels the world to come concerning which we are speaking. But one has testified somewhere saying, What is man that thou rememberest him? Or the son of man, that thou art concerned about him. That's Psalm 8, um, verses 4 through 6. What is man? And just the, the amazement um, that, I, that I have when I start pondering that. You know, how amazing is it? How wonderful is it that God cares enough about us to humble himself? And think about it, that you've got the Creator, the uncreated one, um, everything's created through uh, through his son Jesus and you know Jesus the man the you know the God man and letting himself be mistreated to be humiliated nailed to a cross um, you know certainly for his glory but to ultimately to help us to save us from what we caused and brought on ourselves and think of that, think of that, you know, that all of us can feel that righteous anger when um, justice is not being done. And, you know, just how balled up that can just make us with that's just infuriating seeing this kind of seeing injustice that you can't do anything about. And the injustice that was done to Jesus on the cross, rejected by his own people, by the whole leadership of his own people. You know, beaten and taken to the cross, and he could have stopped that with a with a thought. He could have stopped it, um, but he didn't. He he submitted to that um, to to save us um, from the the power of sin and death. I just I'm always staggered by that, and and so when I see this, the see Psalm eight quoted, you know, what is man? Um, and you know we reflected on that in our study on the Psalms, uh, you know, um, and that how amazing is it that God does care about us? That He sent His Son to be humiliated and die a cursed death on the cross. Um, so, you know, God made His Son at that moment lower than the angels, but by doing so, with that that submission and that weakness, strength and victory comes from that. Um, you know, so everything became, sub, you know, subject to Jesus after that. Um, you know, so he's exalted at the right hand of the Father. Uh, he is the King. Um, but but all of that is done through through weakness and not through strength. Um, so it, it's it's um, staggering for for me to think about that. Verse eight. Um, it says, Thou hast put all things in subject and under His feet, Jesus' feet. And, and for in subjecting all things to Him, He left nothing that is not subject to Him. So, you know, Jesus is in charge of, in control of everything. Um, King of all, all creation. Um, but now we do not see, um, we do not yet see all things subjected to Him. So it's, you know, every, He's in control, He's in charge of everything, but everything's not subject to Him yet. So we have that, that, one of the, the great Bible themes is the already and the not yet. Um, it's kind of like that D-Day thing where, you know, the D-Day, the, the victory is essentially won, um, but the final, you know, the final victory is not, not achieved yet. That comes to the second coming. So it's that, that tension between that, you know, that already and not yet. In verse, in verse 9, um, we've, we have that reminder that Jesus is glorified and exalted um, because He suffered death. And, and, gra and grace is emphasized in this verse too. We've got to remind ourselves 
that God didn't do this for a, um, a certain group of perfect people or a certain group of righteous people. Um, you know, He died for us while we were yet sinners. Um, you know, so we, you know, we, we didn't earn what God did for us. He did it. It's grace. And so that, that reminder um, that, that by the grace of God, He might taste death for everyone. Um, so we can ultimately be freed from death. Um, you know, so we've got to remember in this, in, in everything that Christ has done and that God the Father has done for us um, with the power of the Holy Spirit, that it's not because we're righteous. We're only righteous because of Him. In, in verse 10, um, we have more emphasis on the uniqueness of Christ. And this, again, the, the thematic of, of Jesus is better and uh, we must pay attention to this. We must take heed um, or to, or, or to our everlasting peril if we do not. Um, but so there's more emphasis in, in verse 10 on that uniqueness of Christ. Um, and if this doesn't put a fork in the bad theology of other paths, I don't know what, what does. Because we, we, everything, everything exists for Jesus. Everything exists through Jesus. By His power, He keeps everything going. You know, Jesus is the founder of our salvation, and this is all around verse 10. Um, you know, per, made perfect through suffering, He sanctifies us, and He's the source of our salvation. Um, that there's, you know, He's the living water. He is the, he is the way, not a way. He is the way, and why is He the way? That's what Hebrews has been setting up. It's, it's God sacrificing His Son on our behalf. How can there be another way? Uh, you know, because ultimately, um, ultimately our focus is, um, is in Christ. And Heather, you, you have some, some, some more well, insight into that. Just like you're saying that Jesus is the way, not only was He the way that God planned, but he was the one who fit all of the prophecies. Last semester we talked so much about the prophecies of the Messiah and Jesus is the only one who not only could bring that salvation to us, but he fit everything that all the expectations that came before, which is so appropriate to this um, audience of Hebrew Christians. They would know that. They would be so familiar with the Messianic prophecies that they would see that he was the one, he was that perfect puzzle piece that finished mm -hmm. the, the whole picture. And we we also have that as well as, as modern day Christians, that we get to um, enjoy salvation through Him, but it's only through Christ because He is that perfect puzzle piece. Right. Okay, the one thing that, that just hit me when you were saying that, this was probably, the New Testament probably wasn't written down. Right. So we even have more because Absolutely. we can pick it up any time and reread and reread and we also have our own copies of it where they didn't they had a letter that came to them they read and right. and, and heard that letter and then they passed it on to the next right. group and you had to remember right so you know we have no excuse <laughs> and on top of that we have the holy spirit I know. Which is a game changer. Absolutely. From an understanding perspective. Right. Yeah. Not that it was the Holy Spirit wasn't there, but it wasn't in us the way it is now. That it almost makes you feel like, you know, that you have a gym in your house. There's no excuse not to exercise. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Awesome. Isaiah eight, verse sixteen. I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are signs and portents in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells on Mount Zion. What a, what a comfort it is to be called children of the living God. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, you know, another theme that we see throughout the Bible is uh, inheritance. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, that as children, we do have that wonderful inheritance that God is, is, has prepared for us. Uh, the Father, you know, the Father has given us to the Son, and nothing can snatch us, snatch us out of His hand. 
Um, other paths? No. You must enter by the narrow gate. Um, and anybody that tries to climb over the wall is a thief. That's a, uh, that's a reference um, from uh, Pilgrim's Progress, John, John mm -hmm. Bunyan, which, by the way, I recommend to everybody. Isaiah 12, 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. Um, you know, in, in Christ is where we need to be. Um, our righteousness comes from Jesus, not from ourselves. And that is a, another key concept. Mm -hmm. um, that that's, why, that's why we're in Christ. So when, when the Father looks at us, He sees the righteousness of the Son instead of seeing us. Mm -hmm. our, our, and um, in a, yeah. <laughs> in a, you know, and then ultimately, um, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, I've heard of that. Well, that's just a legal fiction. You know, that that that's a, you know, that's a shell game. So, no, what God says is true. Is it? It's reality. It is. A, it changes reality. And we see reality imperfectly. We don't see things the way that God sees. So of course, our skepticism may say that it's a shell game, but when we can see and switch that perspective and see the way things God sees, then we'll understand His righteousness and all the things that He sees things differently than we do. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Um, and just, we're, we're now around verse 14 in chapter two, just a. Um, this one, this this one made me think a little bit too. Yeah, that since then the children share in flesh and blood. He himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be real children, you've got to share in the 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 nature of. Um, where you came from, and in order, so to you know, so this the writer of Hebrews and the Holy Spirit is saying that Jesus partook of those things for that to happen. Um, so we have flesh and blood, just like Jesus did, which is which is said a little different. Um, it's not that um, Jesus has flesh and blood just like we do. It's we have flesh and blood just like Jesus did. And that's why he became incarnate. It's, it's an interesting um, uh, juxtaposition of the, the words. Um, in verse 16, uh, is it for angels that God has done all this? No, this is, again, this is that, that narrative of, of Jesus is greater. Um, but. No, all of this has been done for the offspring of Abraham. And that reminds us that we're grafted onto that, um, that Abrahamic vine, mm -hmm. um, that we're grafted, we're members of, um, that we are offspring of Abraham. In, seven, in verse 17, uh, that you were reminded that he, had, he, Jesus, had to become like one of us to achieve this salvation, this great salvation for us. Um, that Jesus has become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for sins of the people. If you've noticed, as we read through chapter one and chapter two, we have the, the gospel message encapsulated in just multiple verses as we're going through. They're just restated and restated and restated. Um, that, that, that Jesus has made propitiation for our sins, for the sins of the people. Um, and since Jesus is like us, he suffered and was tempted as well. Um, and because of this, he's able to help us. And that, that um, you know, part of the thrust here is, is you know, stand firm, remain faithful, uh, do not slip away. Mm -hmm. Don't let this, don't let this get at, don't let this get away from you. Mm -hmm. um, but we have help, um, you know, that, that, you know, Jesus is, you know, via the Holy Spirit, you know, we've got that, we've got, we've got that power of the Holy Spirit to rely on. We've got, 
the church to rely on. We have ministering angels to rely on. We are not alone. We have help. Leaning on our own Christian brothers and sisters in times of distress and need, relying on the Word of God, on prayer, um, relying on that, that peace that can come through the Holy Spirit um, can really help us through these times. So if you feel like you know, you're slipping into where there's no hope, that, that's where time to back up, time to talk to a Christian brother or sister and, and get some help and, get, and, and lighten your load and have somebody share your burden with you. Absolutely. You, you yeah. are not in this life by yourself. Yeah. Kind of in summary, you know, we just, it's, you know, we look at this incredible reality of who Jesus is. Uh, Jesus is the king of all creation. We just, uh, you know, he's our high priest as well. He's the very son of God, God himself, the ultimate revelation of God. Uh, he became flesh to deliver us uh, from the slavery of sin and conquer death so that we shall live. Uh, through faith, and in, in, in Hebrews is, is centered on trust. Through faith and trust in Him, we become children of God. You know, what an incredible inheritance awaits us. None is greater than Jesus. Um, there is no salvation through anything else. Um, salvation is only possible through Christ. Um, and He's near. He's not far away. Yeah. He's near. And, the, and with, um, and with the, the Holy Spirit, we've, we've got nothing to fear and just want to kind of end up with in Saving Private Ryan uh, at the very end of it you've got the captain who's been um, you know mortally wounded and he's dying um, right there Ryan comes up to him and and Private Ryan's you know in just you know what can I do for you and then um, you know the captain grab, grab, puts his hand on him and says earn this and I just want to remind everybody that is not the way Christianity works. Right. You know, Jesus hasn't done this for us. Turn around and go earn it. No, nah. we don't earn it. It's a free gift. It's grace. And, and what happens, you know, we're transformed um, by the Holy Spirit, by this love of God. We're transformed into being more Christ-like as we continue our pilgrimage to that great city at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I guess it's now time to, to break out into groups. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying this study as much as I am.